Hello folks, our standard electric time clock has been ticking away happily the last few weeks and now I want to get into the tape drive mechanism. We'll take a look at what's inside this, disassemble it and clean and lubricate it. I've actually debated whether I even want to go to the trouble because it seems to work perfectly. This, this triggers um, easily and smoothly and seems to do everything it needs to do, but in the interest of science and wanting to do a complete restoration, I, I'm going to do some of the work and take this apart and try to at least lubricate it. Um, probably not going to do a museum quality restoration on this part of it, but it would be nice at least to polish the paper drums and then the main disc here. So let's get into it and see what we can find. I want to remove this solenoid relatively early in the process just so I don't damage it. So I think I'm going to go with that next. Seems modern screwdrivers are just a little bit wider than historical screwdrivers. I've had to file a couple of them down to fit well. So here's our solenoid coming out. I'm going to be very careful. You don't ever want to put something like this in an ultrasonic tank that would eat the lacquer off the windings. So that'd be very bad. If you notice, most of these springs are attached on a lever where there's a slot. And so this lets us not have to actually deform the spring to remove it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just spin these around and release the tension. Here we are. I don't know what this white stuff is. It almost looks sulfurous. I'll scrape some of that off, that's gross. Here is the solenoid contact plate. I'm noting that these pins are aligned. All right, off camera I made a little progress. I got our Dave the Week drum off. There was a second set screw and I pulled the double set screw off of this gear and that has revealed this cool snail cam down here and so I think we're close. I don't know how this is attached. Oh, that comes off like so. And so we've got just one gear that I'd like to remove and I don't know which side's going to come off these drums or this but we're very close to being down to the bottom of this so I'll check back within, in with you after it's disassembled and cleaned and ready to put back together. Those of you that have followed my channel know that I always agonize over how much polishing to do. Uh, I've got the main plate looking pretty good. I've got a coat of lacquer on that. I lacquered up the spindles. Those, uh, those look pretty good too, I think. And I got looking at the pendulum and I thought, uh should probably do something there. So I'm part of the way into this project, but I wanted to just comment on this as I'm going. This pendulum, these black, uh, these grooves had black engraver's wax in them. And this thing was all lacquered and it's just spotted in need of work. So what I've been doing is I've been taking some lacquer thinner and going around on the pendulum to get rid of the uh, the old lacquer. And that does actually remove the, the black detail in the uh, the lines and I'm not worried about that because I have done some dial silvering work and re-waxing is a step in that process. You can check that out in my video series on dial silvering. You can see me do that but just wanted to let you know my uh, musings as to what makes sense here. I think I've got enough of the lacquer off. I'm going to actually do some light sanding since I, I need to do that anyway uh, to get rid of the extra engraver's wax, but I'm gonna try to make this look a little nicer. So I've done a little bit of semi-chrome on here too to try to lighten the brass and get rid of the spots. We're making some progress, but sometimes it's hard to tell, is it yellowing of brass or is it actually lacquer that you're fighting? So what I wanted to show was the difference between these edges where there's still some lacquer present and the part that the semi-chrome has no trouble working on. 
Semi-chrome does not work through lacquer. Uh, I mean, you can do it if, you, if you're if you really masochistic and have a lot of time, you can wear through the lacquer using semi-chrome. But using lacquer thinner is a lot more efficient. So I'm going to touch this up with a little bit more lacquer thinner and then uh, do my main work in semi-chrome if I can get it. I may have to sand to get some of these uh, these deep corrosion pivots uh, pits off, but I think we're going to be okay with just semi-chrome. Our pendulum bob now has a couple coats of lacquer on it, and I want to do an experiment and see if I can put the engraver's wax in after the lacquer and have this work out, or if maybe the lacquer will heat up and get too soft and it'll be a mess. So we're going to see this may be a failed experiment, but we'll give it a try. I have a hot air gun. This is actually an electronic tool uh, that produces a small volume of very hot air. Uh, this goes up to eight or 900 degrees. So not your, uh, not your grandmother's hair dryer, but um, I think this will be about the right amount of heat for what we're trying to do. When I've done larger dial silvering projects, I've actually used a propane torch and that's gonna be way too much because the underside of this bob is lead. And the last thing I want is a molten lead blob. So um, I have, this is a, a crayon of engraver's wax. It's black, it's hard, but it flows nicely with some heat. This is available from Time Savers and probably other clock suppliers. So we're gonna just give it a try and see if I can figure out enough heat that will melt the engraver's wax, but not um, damage the lacquer to the point that uh, we're gonna have a problem. Rewaxing is done, and I did as much material removal as I could with uh, wiping and gently scraping. One note on this, by the way, whatever you scrape with needs to be softer than the brass. So plastic, wood, something like that. I use a combination of things to try to get in here and get as much off as I could. But I've given up. I think this is going to need some sanding. And uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure that all of my sanding marks are concentric with the bob. I don't want any of this business, which would look terrible. So I'm gonna make a tool for that. Here's our setup. I've got a drill mounted in a clamp. I've got my shop made chuck here mounted just with a, a carriage bolt and a nut on the backside. And this is Attached to my drill on low speed here. So this will be manual control and I think we're gonna get pretty uh, close to what we need. Now the back of our pendulum bob has some things on it that are not flat so I'm gonna just use some pieces of paper towel to um, prop up the, uh, the low spots and we'll give it a try see how it works. Here's the finished bob. Uh, came out pretty well. There's a little bit of irregularity in the um, the wax, but I think it, it looks a heck of a lot better than it did. And this is an old clock, so a little patina is okay. Um, I uh, Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. I've got a little bit more polishing to do, then we'll get the bell mechanism back together. The tape mechanism is cleaned up and mostly reassembled. Um, debated about showing the actual assembly part of the video and I think it's probably better to just refer you to the pictures that you took when you disassembled your movement if you're following along with your own clock and then just point out some of the adjustments that may be necessary to make this all work. So we've got a couple levers. We've got uh, this lever that advances the day of the week wheel and then we have this lever that advances the the tape a minute at a time and there are some um, adjustments that may be necessary to make that work and a couple of these places are 
I was surprised to find that they weren't indexed better, but it's the way that it is. The first one is right here. This screw on this bracket sets the depth of this rod right here, and the, therefore this pin. And so you may need to loosen this and then rotate that slightly until you get good action on the day of the week wheel. Uh, note that in order for this ratchet to work, you need to not be up too high on the snail cam here. So you might need to advance the minute mechanism so that that falls and then you have free movement of the day of the week lever. Otherwise, this, this is going to be held up in another way. Uh, one other note, the, the spool goes at the bottom as you're holding it, and this lever right here does depend on gravity. Um, if, you, if you're testing the movement in some other orientation, this lever may not work the way that it's supposed to. So make sure as you're running the movement that you're holding it with the spools down. The other place that requires a little bit of uh, fussing with is, it's, it's hard to see, it's down here. This piece has a screw that is through here. You, to, to adjust that, you have to actually remove this lever. But that sets the position of this bottom click. And what you may find is that if you advance the minute lever, you may not have enough throw to have it reliably pick up another tooth. And so moving the, the bottom click back and forth is your main point of adjustment for that. Um, a couple things that I had challenges with that I wanted to point out when, uh, if you hold the, the minute mechanism lever, by the way, then you can advance this quickly. Like so. I found that this was binding, and it didn't actually track very well with one rotation. You can see I actually marked this shaft with a little bit of Sharpie to see where it was binding. And what I discovered is that there wasn't anything that was bent, but this snail cam wheel and the double click wheel up here, there needs to be a little gap between these wheels. And when you slide this gear on, the tendency is for it to fall down and be in contact with this, but these rotate at different speeds, and that's a problem. So there needs to be a little gap here, and this, this should fly around with just a little bit of force. Um, you should be able to see the snail cam go around and lift the day of the week lever. should be coming pretty soon here. Actually, here it's coming. There it goes. So that goes around once every 12 hours, and that should be triggering off of the main wheel. So you can verify all that action on the back here. By holding the minute lever, you can spin this rapidly and make sure that the day of the week wheel does what it's supposed to do. Everything moves freely, everything is lubricated, all the springs need to be reattached according to your pictures. Uh, one thing that's a little bit weird is that most of these springs are coil springs. Uh, but this bottom click here actually uses this wire spring that comes from the top plate. So you need to get these roughly where they're going to go. Um, and then when you put the top plate on, this this uh, just single wire spring provides a little bit of tension there. Uh, the good news is this isn't an especially complicated mechanism. So I think if you uh, just run it a number of times, you know, run it through all of its cycles, you'll be able to adjust it to get it where you want it to go. On to the front. I have attached the day of the week wheel. There's just a pair of set screws here and I've got some gentle tension on that. And then I've put one of my contactors on here. What's supposed to happen is when a pin is present, that's supposed to push up the contactor so it doesn't make contact with the, the contact on this side. And then during a period when the clock is supposed to ring, that contact is supposed to fall and make contact. What I want to do is I want to rotate this contact slightly, um, and this just attaches to the screw on the back side here, so that my contact is actually contacting the silver contact surface there. Um, and I think a little higher is probably fine. Um, it, it's a little gentler angle for the paper this way, and that's about where it was hitting 
originally. I'll put some others on and just make sure they're all the same. Uh, so all of these are roughly in the right place. Again, gravity matters. Uh, there's lots of weights that do things, so the spool needs to go basically straight down. Uh, when you're adjusting the day of the week, you need to make sure that your snail cam has just tripped so that you've got full travel. Otherwise, weird things are going to happen and you're going to confuse yourself. But when this advances, that should lift all the contacts. And if you go to a place where the pins are not there, this should, uh, all four of these should be making contact. Now it looks like I could actually rotate my wheel back a little bit just to make sure that there's clearance here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just watch this a few more cycles. The last step are the pin drive wheels for the paper tape mechanism. And these guys have hidden set screws in them, which you access through these two holes. So I'm going to go ahead and stick one of these on. And by the way, I've lubricated everything. Make sure you do that before you get it together or you'll be disappointed with yourself. Next one, same deal. I'm going to throw that on here. And just for aesthetic reasons, these set screws go on the inside. Now it's important that these are perfectly lined up with each other. Otherwise your minutes are not gonna work out. So take some care to do that. And then to actually tighten them, I'm gonna take a smaller screwdriver and just go through um, and catch that set screw on the middle. And actually I can do this a little bit easier by just doing one wheel at a time. I can see through the, the hole at the top of this wheel where my screwdriver is hitting, and I can catch the set screw. And when I've got that, at least so it's not going to move on me, then I can go put my other one on. Make sure that my pins are aligned. Go around and get the set screws forward here. Like so. And again, we tighten. And then I think we can actually probably put this back in the clock and we'll load the paper on it and then we'll make sure that, um, that these are aligned well and that the minute slots in the paper tape line up with the contacts. And we can adjust these drums very slightly if we need to do that. Our tape mechanism is back in the clock and there's a few more adjustments that we need to do. And I think there's an order that might be helpful in order to get this where you need it to be with minimal fussing. Um, the first thing is we need to have the minute wheel in the position where the snail cam has just tripped so that we can freely move our day of the week wheel. The four contacts, at least in my clock, are not all uniform spacing. You can see that uh, these, uh, these brass tubes are all the same width, but they are, uh, the contacts are slid in different position laterally on the tube. And so the workflow that you need to come up with is ultimately to get the contacts so that they um, track correctly in the, the tape. And your adjustment points are the in and out position of the two drums. And then um, you can rotate them slightly as well as you can bend these contacts a little bit. And so what I would recommend is you wait until last to reconnect the wires up there because it may take you a couple tries to slide these uh, contacts around until they actually line up well with the tape. So start at the back, um, get the, the rear drum in kind of the right place using the two set screws inside to adjust that. Then get the, the outer one on and get the tape there and get this sort of close and you may need to go uh, iterate a couple times to get the contacts in place with the tape. When you're doing the early stages of this, it really doesn't matter where the tape is set. Uh, I just hung both tapes on so that they're tensioned appropriately and I can see where things land. And I got to the place where I'm reasonably happy with how the contacts are sitting on the tape. Uh, but if you note, my, my tapes are not aligned with each other. And they're also not aligned with the clock mechanism. This is an AM, PM, as well as day of the week mechanism, and I need this to change 
at least very close to midnight. It won't work if it changes at, you know, 930 in the morning. So we need to find where that moment is where this mechanism just trips and then that's our midnight and then we can put the tape in the right place relative to that. To find our midnight point, I need to advance the mechanism forward what might be a fair distance. So I'm gonna hold down my minute wheel and then I can turn this knob here. And what I'm watching is right above the minute wheel, you can see this lever start to lift. And this takes quite a while to wind around. Um, my tape also has some, uh, some splices and tape in it, so that's being a little bit of a challenge here. I'm gonna go have to fix that and punch those through again. But we're gonna continue winding around, winding around, winding around. And there it just tripped. So this is within a few minutes of midnight and I can go reset my tape so that 12 o'clock is at the position of the contact. We've got our tape mechanism wired in. Actually contact is coming around in a few seconds so we'll be able to see it actuate. Uh, and also I did wire in the bell that I showed in the video prior to this one. Here should be our, our advancing of the tape mechanism. There it is, moved one minute. So the bell is over here, and this is wired into the contacts at the top of the clock. There's a common contact, and then it's going to one of the bell contacts. And I can ring it manually by pushing the override button here. And we can ring it with the tape mechanism if we advance it so that we've got a hole coming up. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna hold. We've got uh, some punches coming up here. I'm gonna hold a minute lever which lets us advance this. And now we've got something coming right up. I've got uh, the bell is attached to channel one, which is this one in front here. So we should see that move in, uh, actually I'm gonna advance it one more minute here. There we go. And so now, as soon as the contacts come around up here that actually do the ringing of the bell, which I just saw them go on about the three o'clock side, in about 30 seconds, we will see relay number one close based on this tape position and our bell should ring. There we go. One more installment coming for slave clocks, and then we'll be at the end of our standard electric time and we'll move on to the international time recorder. Thanks for watching.